Another episode of Open World. Hi, Ale. Hi, Meli. Today we Hi, have everyone. a special guest with us, Olga Petrova. Hi, Olga. It's so nice to see you here with us. Thank you for joining us. Hi, and thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure. Like, we are really excited to have you. Yes, thank you so, so much for joining us, Olga. Olga, for everyone that's watching us, can you please introduce yourself, provide some background on your experience, video game localization, and a little bit about your journey? Yeah, sure. Um, once again, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here and um, share a little bit about what I know about localization and what keeps me going for more than 15 years already. Um, going on 20, I think. So yeah, um, I'm a Mostly project manager uh, throughout my career, uh, managing teams and projects and video games uh, localization. I have participated in localization of over 200 games, roughly. Uh, wow. The AAA titles, wow. MMORPGs, mobile games. So when I started, it was just freelance translation. So I actually took the full um, path from being a freelance translator to being a professional. And um, I was lucky to have worked on some of the most successful projects in the gaming industry from... I was going to ask if there was any IP that you're most proud of or that was very successful. Yeah, so big companies like Activision, 2K, Capcom, Bethesda, Rockstar. Oh. Uh, I did <laughs> yeah. projects for them. <laughs> Uh, when I was dropping more. names, <laughs> 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 yeah, I know. <laughs> I <see. laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, so um, I used to work for a big, um, for the largest original publisher um, in uh, Russia, and um, that's that's when I get um, acquainted with big names. Uh, and then I moved on to work in a developer a development studios, where I was able to do some influence on the development process and um, become a localization advocate and evangelist if you <laughs> if you yeah um yeah it's needed it's needed especially yeah. in indie in indie studios i i i started not in only in indie studios but huh? yeah not only in indie not, studios not only but in it's indie just indie like everywhere uh, i remember one of my first steps in the video game industry was to be a localizer, localization something, you know, advocate, consultant, or whatever, in an indie dev studio. So that's... Yeah. Yeah, it is really needed. Like, and you can tell when someone, like, puts into the game localization early in the stages, because you can tell that everything runs smooth, the localization is perfect. Um, all the control aspects are taken into account. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, that's I'm okay. I couldn't agree that. more with anything you guys are saying. Yes, it's um, it's it's extremely important, and um, I'm like I'm still. It's it's hard to believe that in 2023 we're still talking about why we need localization to be a part of the game development, right? Oh my God, yeah. Um, absolutely. So that, that's why I think it's so important, like what, what you were saying. And uh, since we're already talking about, about this, uh, I hope it's okay. I'll ask you the next question, which is very related. And that's what are some common challenges that arise when localization is brought in too late in the development process? And how can these challenges be mitigated? Yeah, where do I start? Um, I'd love to say about this. <laughs> Yeah, I sometimes call localization a Cinderella of the game development. We rarely get invite invited to the ball. I love this. I love it. <laughs> I'm so sad. Can we use oh, that? No. Where you, I'm using that. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. That. It is true. We yeah. are, um, for a lot of um, companies, we are the least 
favored stepchild and it is what it is right and we are so, so. important like come on <laughs> how how can this happen yeah, we're like we're not, not a cinderella you know and you're inviting us like no there's no way <laughs> if you invite us we're gonna make an impact just saying <laughs> Yeah, maybe drop a shoe or two. <laughs> but yeah, in all seriousness, um, just I think for, for the most part, it's never intentional. It's just because the developers don't know better and they just don't think about it when they start their journey. Uh, so bringing us late in the process essentially costs you and you end up doing a lot of reworks, uh, a lot of changes, or just accepting the quality in localization that is um, that is lower than what you have in English or whatever original language your game is um, uh, created in. So, um, the, you might be telling a joke that when it is translated will not get understood by most of the players who don't speak English. Um, you might um, have a puzzle in your game that for a person who doesn't speak English won't make any sense and will leave them confused. Um, your user interface might not support text expansion and um, you will just end up playing font size Tetris when you try to put in the translated text in those yeah. small teeny box. Um, what else? I love this. Mm, These are great examples. They're like themselves. very practical. Yeah. Like, very yeah, and, like not to the point ways to like know how like writing and like it's not like I, I am a manager, but I'm only I'm I'm always very close to what I'm working on. So, and that's that's also one of the things. What why why you have to have localization people on yeah. the team? Is they will spend time. They will invest um, and make an effort to get your game. They will be on your side. They will be protective of the product that you as developer is creating, and uh, they will try to make it as good in other language as it is in the language that you use to conceive it. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and when you were mentioning... Didn't talk about, didn't even mention the cost here, right? So all yeah. that that comes up when you bring in localization late, uh, that means more money is going to be spent on the work that can be done early in the process and therefore be cheaper. Yeah, totally. When you were mentioning the challenges, um, I could easily like recall uh, games that uh, had those problems that I already played, you know, and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this could have been such an easy fix from the early stages. But here I am playing this game, um, facing these challenges, and it's like, oh, this joke is not even funny in my language. So I totally agree. Um. I have the other question now. Uh, from your experience, what are the benefits of having a localization expert collaborate with the development team from the early stages? That's a really good question. And I think we touched a little bit on it already, but let us let me just expand and um, see what else comes to mind when, uh, when I think about the benefits um, for the developer. Um, well, let's start with money. Because I think that uh, proverbial return on investment from localization that everyone expects, um, it's one of the things that we can rarely justify and can rarely separate what exactly was the localization role, apart from the marketing or user acquisition campaign or the game itself. Maybe the game is so genius that it just... Um, doesn't have to have all the bells and whistles of that localization brings into. Um, but the money, uh, it's just uh, you keep the cost down. You, um, you avoid the expensive do-overs 
because you get it right first time. So one of the games in my last workplace turned out to be extremely successful, but it was not created with localization in mind. They had it in English for the longest time. At the same time, the management realized that they're leaving a lot of money on the table because, well, there are players who don't speak English all over the world that could be enjoying the game and bringing in money, the revenue. Um, so that need, it was, um, it was there. So the decision was made to actually finally have the localization in the game. So without like even any numbers, I'm just going to tell you that it took nine months of work for two engineers revamping the code and making localization possible. Oh my God. Like the amount That's of insane. money, time and effort. Oh my God. Wow. The translation itself didn't take that much time. Right. I imagine. Oh my God. It's insane. I get like oh, goosebumps. <laughs> it's insane. So it's pretty really expensive. It can be like, it can save you a lot of money if you think about internationalization, if you have the right people on the team who can guide the developer and tell them that there are certain things that are better avoided or there are certain things that need to be done from day one, uh, that even if you don't have, if you don't launch with multiple languages, if you, even if you only launch in English, by the time that you make a decision to localize, it's not exactly like uh, going like that, but very similar. And it does save you a lot of money and time to make it happen. Money and uh, time, two things that we could all have more of. Time. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's the famous triangle, right? So money, time, yeah. and quality. Um, yeah. Yeah. At least you hit 100%. two of those points. And then quality yeah. is up to you and uh, the professionalism of the localization people that you have. Um, Olga, you're talking about the quality, the professionalism, the translation, localization, right? When taken in the right time and place of the uh, development process, saves you money, saves you time. Um, but I want to go back to the professionalism aspect and the cultural considerations, right, that come with the localization process. Do you think that there are any cultural considerations, like in a broad aspect, that are particularly important for game developers to be aware of when creating yeah, content, you know, due to different markets? Absolutely, Alexis. It's it's a very good question. Again, like it's very relevant to to the daily work that localization um, mm -hmm. teams are doing around the world. Right? We are we're bridging the cultural gaps. We're doing it every single day, and yeah. we we'll love because we're bringing players together and then making us um, all a little bit closer to each other. So there are um, linguistic consideration, uh, so language and humor. You don't want to have any puns and jokes that might not translate well. Um, it's like if you tell a joke that only makes sense in one language and you hear crickets from from the audience, right? So that's that's you don't want to run into this. Um, there's, don't get me started on geopolitical sensitivities. I, I can give you two very fresh examples and one not so fresh one. So I was going to ask for examples, so please go ahead. <laughs> okay, so for that one, yeah, you know, let's uh, because I do have it. Um, say that Spider-Man game that was just released when they mm -hmm. had that uh, flag snafu with um, mixing up Cuban and Puerto Rican flags. Yes, they, I saw. If that. they had culturalization uh, expert on the team, or if they paid maybe more attention, they. Oh my God! Easily. Yeah, and that was and that. It was so simple. <laughs> it's simple. <laughs> we're doing the yeah. same expression. <laughs> that we're doing like yeah, that. we're just yeah. like, oh my God! Yes, I saw it, and it was like, it's no way. It's it takes a certain per like you, you. It takes some skills, right? It takes uh, a certain. I don't know. Um, you need to be 
tuned to to certain things in um in a game or in a movie or in a book to be able to catch up on these things and that's why you you need people who can help you with that uh the same thing with the barbie movie that was um banned in vietnam because of the night right. line right? and that map uh that they were referring to it didn't even look like a map but it was significant for uh for Vietnamese people, right? Mm -hmm. And it was uh it was it was a big issue for them. So it was justified in um in their eyes. Um from my own experience I can tell you that um we had really um big problems with uh Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and that was released in Russian uh in Russia and um with the um, level that Activision actually took away from the Russian edition um, with the uh, terrorist and the civilian killing civilians in the airport. Uh, yes, that that I remember Russian that famous. Oh level. my god! Yeah, yeah. Well, we had yeah, very a, quite a big uh, backlash from um, the uh, from inside the the country. Uh, there was pointed at the company at that time, the publisher. So they blamed um, us for neglecting the uh, this particular sensitivity and this particular case of like, even like considering releasing the game in, in the country. So, um, so just like, you know, like free, the quite bright examples, but there are so more uh, and they happen all the time. I, I actually, Myself, I have a collection of uh, the movies that um, make some funny things with the Russian language, uh, just because well, it uh, sort of entertained me, and um, I I feel I find it interesting that with the amount of money and the budgets that uh, Hollywood have, uh, Hollywood has, they just neglect of double checking so many things and uh, oh i imagine that i would love to see that collection yeah <laughs> a lot of more movies have actually spanish speakers in them you probably like you can totally relate and uh and we can do the same. same with the spanish yeah 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 yeah, 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 we are, yeah. but i think the point the point that you were making about the movie and what why this is like this, those were great examples and it's so painful is it goes there's a lot of effort like money and, and, and people working for years sometimes in some of some of these games and just you know to get ruined or banned completely or for a completely full audience like of several countries and stuff like that just yeah. for these tiny mistakes that you know can be avoided that's like how important i think this message that we are here trying to spread thanks to thanks thanks to all guys like um you know that's i think that's 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 a great like proof of our yeah. points <laughs> I totally agree, and it's heartbreaking for the uh, for the teams, right? Because, like you said, they're working so hard on uh, they like putting their heart and soul in in the game, and then um, they're being criticized for something that could be easily corrected or avoided at all. So yeah, um, these were my examples. Yeah, those yeah. are great, great, great examples. Thank you for those. <laughs> great examples. Related to to what I just said, um, can you share some advice for? those game developers who might be listening to this episode and um, might need to become more familiar with the importance of early localization involvement? Um, yeah, let me try. So I, I would tell that they need to be curious as a lot of times the developers speak only one language and there's not, it's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Uh, you can't expect yeah. everyone to be bilingual or, um, be interested in, uh, learning something about the, uh, different culture, but it's, it pays out, it pays off when, um, when you try and do that. So just be curious, try to understand and embrace the, uh, landscapes of different cultures and languages to research, ask questions. I think the ability of asking to ask questions and not be afraid to ask them is one of the most important things that uh, a person can actually have in them. 
I think that the ability to ask questions and to show curiosity is actually showing that people are not indifferent and they're passionate about what they're doing. And uh, that's really important. And it usually shows in the results. Um, what else? So besides curiosity and asking questions, um, let's talk about being a building a diverse team. So oh my God, have yeah. I love this. Members. Okay. With different backgrounds, with, from different countries, speaking different languages, that usually helps. Um, my biggest release so far was a game that was published on Netflix platform. And um, mm -hmm. we launched in 15 languages and we ended up having 33. Obviously, I don't speak 33 languages. But we had a lot of team members who were able to help out with a lot of them and that did help and because again like having having people on the team who are able to give you advice about their culture who uh, can tell you what's acceptable and what's not what is um what aligns with customs of the country and what doesn't um and sometimes are able to tell you the peculiarities of the language uh, and um, if you have a problem with, um, say, Hindi, which we didn't know that Unity had, uh, but we had some Hindi-speaking speaking people on the team and we were trying to assess like how serious this issue is. Can we actually release the game with this issue or do we need to change the word that have all the words in the game that have this particular glyph or this, this particular character in it to something else? and um, try that approach instead, right? So um, there are those small things, but they, they add up to being very important and um, equality <laughs> never, <laughs> never going down. So yeah, that's um, definitely bringing unique flavor to the table uh, for sure. Yeah, this is some great yeah. advice. Thank you, Olga. That's yeah. Yes. The funny with the Netflix release that was, um, my mom was actually, uh, well, I was breaking on my social, social media and she was um, seeing that and was asking, but she, how do you translate in 33 languages? Like, mom, okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> love <that. laughs> I love that. I love that. It's a concept that, that I found in many people working in the localization industry that moms, Usually they don't, don't understand. quite grasp <laughs> yeah. that's what we do. And that was like after 15 years that I've been doing that, she was still very um, no. naive. My daughter is a translator, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what my mom says. Like, yeah, my, my daughter works translating video games. She doesn't even have a clue <laughs> what goes exactly. into it. <laughs> And I think that's um, that's actually a common misconception, right? That we also have to find because for a lot of times for the management, we are just glorified translators um, who for some reason earn more than they deserve. Um, but that's not the case. Like a lot of work that we as localization professionals do is language agnostic. It yeah. needs to be done in product, no matter how many languages you support. You need to have your conversation with the game designer to find out what was put behind each and every player facing string in the game. You need to have it documented and you need to know the context for that game because the translators, they're going to ask you. And if not the first time, then maybe the second time around. Yeah. And you need to have that localization Bible, like I call you, like I call it, like it's usually based off on game design document, but it's so much more, right? So you build up on that and you, you use the questions that are asked by translation team, you add on to that, and then you, when it's time to launch a new language, oh, you have it already. And a lot of questions are already answered. So, um, yeah. It's uh, it's so much more than just translation and just sending files back and forth. You have to think about so many things besides just having the text translated. 
uh, starting from, I don't know, choosing the right font, making sure that uh, all the characters are there, like I said. Um, when I started in localization, I was translated in the language that was not part of eFix. So very rarely the developers had an idea that there is certain set of characters that will be used for displaying the text in the game. So when a lot of times when we were receiving a localized version, no no characters were, were seen there at all. Or the best case we had like the tofu um squares. So well, I, can, I remember I can, those squares. I literally count the times how, how many times I had to get back to the developers and ask them where's my Cyrillic font? Why don't oh I have God. a Cyrillic font? Yeah, so it's uh, it's better now for sure, and uh, a lot of fonts have all um, like full uh, set of characters for alphabetized languages, but it's still like for a lot of them, it's still a work in progress. And usually, like we game designers, the UX UI uh, people, they like to work with the fonts that are pretty, that um, yes. convey a certain atmosphere. Like imagine something like. Bioshock, which is with its art deco um, vibes, right? So um, those fonts, they really have uh, support for all the glyphs. So you need to think about that because your engineers, game designers, even your UI, UX people might not, and you need to help them, right? So um, yeah, it's part of the job. Very exciting, actually. Like it. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I it love is. that. I mean, um, we in Spanish, we we have special characters all the time too. Um, and it's actually funny because uh, the tofu squares that, like you mentioned, I find them always, all the time. And it's just like, oh, it was just as simply as changing the font. <laughs> yeah, there you have it. It happens. Um, yeah, or just testing, right? So just bring the pangram, use the pangram, and uh, you will be able to tell right away if any of the characters are missing. But it's just because engineers are not trained and the uh, the game developers rarely think about it from the start, especially India, right? Like they, they're thinking about creating something so special, so, so new, so exciting that they just don't have time to think about all the intricacies that might come with actually making a global release so um it's it's just the nature of the uh, of the work and that's why localization exists as a discipline and uh that's why we need it i love it i love it this episode Where yeah, has been one of my favorites like thank you so much olga for your time this has been amazing guys i don't know if you want to say anything else Oh, oh yeah, yeah, everything, everything you said, so it was so on point. I think everyone listening, like, it's just great, great advice, great uh, examples. So thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. I, I really, like, I love my job. <laughs> I really like what I do. We can tell. We can tell. Yeah. We can receive the and passion thank you that for you have. Sharing, thank you for sharing your own personal stories as well. That's very Yeah. Important. Yeah. I find it that when people watch, they usually want to hear something personal, right? Rather than just yeah. very um, abstract. We do too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. We, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone. You that you are listening or hearing or watching this episode on YouTube or whatever where you are listening this to. Thank you so much for joining us today. We will see you again in another episode. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.